Hello, everyone. I am James Milan, and this is this week's COVID-19 and Town Manager update. I think mostly a COVID-19 update uh, this week. Anyway, we will soon find out. We are joined by our very own Town Manager, Adam Chapdelaine. Hello, Adam. Hey, James. Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, so I was saying, um, my sense is that uh, that we we really are basically getting a COVID nineteen and COVID adjunct uh, uh, update, um, uh, and so let's get right to it. Absolutely. So I think today and this week the message remains predominantly the same as it has over recent weeks, and that is there's there's much hope. The vaccines continue to roll out. More and more people are vaccinated. Percentages of, the, uh, percentages of the population being vaccinated continue to increase. But unfortunately, on balance, our transmission rate is actually slightly ticked up this week from 1.2% to 1.4%, our positivity rate, uh, I should say. So the virus is still out there. It's unfortunately trending in the wrong direction. And I think that's a reminder to continue to try to adhere to the public health guidelines that have been put in place. Continue wearing a mask, continue social distancing, continue limiting gatherings with people outside of your household, uh, unless you're vaccinated and, and they're vaccinated, uh, because the, the virus is still there. The variants are definitely there. You know, we've heard that Massachusetts, the most prevalent transmission is now that B117. I believe that's the UK uh, variant. So the variants here, it's spreading, I believe, a little more easily than the, the initial virus. So there's, there's still very good reason to remain cautious uh, while remaining hopeful and waiting your turn to get the vaccine. So again, I, I feel like it's been a couple of weeks now that I've I've had this message, and I think it, yeah, it's one of hope and concern. And um, you know, let's let's hang on that few more weeks, maybe a month or more, uh, as we all wait to get vaccinated. Um, and you know, I don't mean to make it morbid, but to keep people alive. Absolutely. Right? Uh, I, I've, I've heard many experts now say almost any death from here on forward is an avoidable death, based on the our behaviors as a society. So let's. Let's keep those behaviors in check and, you know, and protect our neighbors. That's a powerful way uh, really to present that, that fact, you know, that every death going forward is avoidable. And if we behave properly, we can really, really, really uh, impact uh, that, you know, or reduce that, that number, which obviously everybody wants. Uh, a couple of things, Adam, I, I have also heard um, that Massachusetts is you know, the site of the highest prevalence of, I don't know what the, you know, official designation for the variant that is dominant in Brazil or uh, emanating from there. But that is another, you know, I'm sure cause for concern on a statewide and, and even townwide level. Um, and then secondarily, um, I something that you and I, it's been a theme of our conversations as we have praised, um, legitimately and, and deservedly so praised the Arlington population for its discipline uh, around observing the protocols that you mentioned uh, virtually each and every week. Well, I feel like it needs to be said that uh, I and, and others who frankly have approached me knowing that I get to talk to you and, and you know, during these updates, uh, others have voiced concerns that they are seeing less, less mask wearing um happening in town they've noted it, it, it's it's been a reduction that's been noted uh so i don't know how dramatic that decrease is um etc but people are concerned and i think that again we need to um listen to what you're saying yeah. um and and just stick it out it's so very very tempting with the beautiful weather with things starting to open up with the news that we hear etc cetera, etc cetera. I get it, I think, as, as much as anybody, I'm sure you do, but boy, people are, it does feel, even in our town, that people are starting to just lapse around this. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, I do, I agree on all those points, right? I think Arlington has been an exemplar in terms of our residents' behavior over the course of the past year and more, uh, but I also see in Arlington, and it, and it's not Arlington specific, really, everywhere I, I've been, uh, you know, whether I'm in my car or walking, it, COVID fatigue is setting in, right? There's more, you know, more of a chance that the mask is on the chin or that it's hanging from your ear if you're not near anybody. And, you know, I, I'm not saying that if you're not near anybody, you know, that you have to have it up constantly. 
you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to push that on people, but if you don't have it on, you're less likely to react and put it on when you need to have it on. So yeah, I, I'm glad you highlighted that because uh, it's not, you know, I, I think Arlingtonians deserve to be recognized for their commitment over the past year. Uh, but I think we can all serve to be reminded that, uh, you know, as we both have been saying, it's not over. Uh, keep that mask on, protect yourself, protect others. And as we talk, you know, about COVID and, and it's, it's, it's kind of lingering, you know, presence and threat here in town and beyond, um, I'm mindful of a couple of other things, you know, federal funding around uh, helping with the with local efforts. Where, where, where does that stand, for instance? So as I think has now been pretty widely reported and publicized by the town, we expect to receive a pretty significant amount of money from the American Rescue Plan. Uh, act that was passed by Congress and signed by the president. Uh, we expect to receive approximately $36 million that we believe can be expended in four different buckets. Um, the challenge is that those buckets right now are about one or two sentences a piece, and we're wait still awaiting further guidance from the Federal Department of Treasury on exactly how we can spend the funds. Mm -hmm. We was on a call with Senator Warren and her staff last week, and it was asked of her by the mayor of Newton, um, you know, we're hearing that we're not going to get the regulations until the beginning of May. Is there anything you can do to help it help them come sooner? So Senator Warren committed to talking to Secretary Yellen to see what could be done about that. But um, but given that, it sounds like we could still be several weeks away before we know when, uh, you know, exactly how we'll be able to spend those funds. So I think the the message is we have good news. We, we you know, the, the federal government did act to support local government across the nation. Uh, but there's still a little bit of a wait and see to determine uh, exactly how we can utilize those funds. And we'll, we'll remain communicative with um, both our elected officials as well as with the general public um, about what we believe uh, those funds will be, uh, be able to be used for and how they can benefit Arlingtonians um, most appropriately. Yeah, I mean, it's an enormous amount of money. It's an enormous program. It makes some sense, right, that, that it would take some time even yeah. after the announcement or maybe even the availability of the funds to figure out, you know, what the rules are going to be for yeah. the distribution. Uh, anything else, Adam, that, uh, you know, COVID related on the local front here? So COVID related, I would say uh, we have a survey out right now, a consumer survey, where we're asking uh, residents of the town to tell us what they're looking for from businesses or what their comfort levels are. Um, in patronizing certain businesses because we want to be able to then in turn help the businesses best serve their customers. Um, you know, we've had an economic development recovery task force in place for the better part of the last year, helping businesses, working directly with businesses in the Chamber of Commerce to help them through the pandemic. And now we very much want to make sure that businesses are uh, staying on their feet or ready to get back on their feet as uh, hopefully the pandemic lifts over the course of the summer. So this survey is available on the town website. It's open uh, until April 15th, so you have about a week to complete it, and we'd really appreciate people taking the time to, uh, to fill out that survey. Um, one additional non-COVID note I would mention is that blue bikes are starting to be repopulated in town uh, as of today. Um, I don't think they'll all be back today, but starting today and over the course of the next several days, blue bikes will be back in town. So if you have the chance, uh, take a ride. I think it's a great amenity and asset that we now have in town, and I hope people are able to utilize it. Yeah, and you're certainly, uh, you know, advertising that, so to speak, or, or, or announcing that on an appropriate day, as folks can see from uh, my backyard and, and, and yours, if you're looking out the window. It is a gorgeous day. We've got a few more coming up here. And uh, yeah, we're just starting, you know, what is for many of us our favorite time of year. So get on a bike and uh and and start to enjoy life in that way that's that sounds good yeah well said well said <laughs> all right well thank you very much if there uh, want to just double check where we're we, we uh there's nothing else that uh you want to share with us at the moment no, that, that that is a wrap for me today thank you all right great and we made it in um, under 10 minutes a magic number as far as some folks in town hall are concerned. So hopefully they'll be happy with us. Um, I have been speaking um, with Adam Chapdelaine, our town manager for this COVID-19 town manager update. My name is James Milan. I appreciate Adam being here. We thank him for that and we thank you and we'll see you next time.